Today, we're taking a look at Larry June's watch collection. Larry June is a rapper from San Francisco, California, and as a matter of fact, he is my favorite rapper. He's had an incredibly prolific run in the past five years, releasing multiple projects every single year. He started off independent and then went on to sign to Warner Brothers, and now he's back independent and doing better than ever before. As he said, just thinking about it, did it all no label, signed to Warner Brothers for a minute, but I hated it. Because he's just uh, the kind of person that likes to be his own boss. He even has his own clothing brand, Midnight Organic, that's constantly selling out. So he's racking it uh, a lot of income with this brand. And also his music is doing crazy numbers nowadays, especially compared to uh, back a couple of years ago. His recent album, Spaceships on the Blade, sold 17,000 copies in the first week. That's massive numbers for an independent artist, especially considering that most of the features on there were artists he's really cool with, so he probably didn't even pay for them. He's also collaborating with uh, new faces such as The Alchemist, Babyface Ray, 2 Chains, and uh, also Currency, who's a frequent collaborator of his. So uh, his album was definitely amazing and uh, by far my favorite album of this year. And also a lyric he has in one of his older songs is trying to pick the watch to wear today, kind of getting tough. So let's see if it's really that tough for him in the morning when he decides what he wants to wear. The first watch is the Rolex Daytona. Did the stainless Daytona with the three clocks low key, all the people seen was a white drop. This is the reference 116 500LN in stainless steel with a ceramic bezel. This watch is worth about $35,000. And this is definitely an investment piece or a watch that will hold value over the long term. Has gone down a little ever since the peak of the market, but will still retain a lot of value over time. Larry June is a big fan of financial literacy and also spreading positivity and good habits in his uh, music, whether that's eating healthy or saving your money. As he said, if I make 100,000, then I'm saving 98. The second watch is the Patek Philippe Aquanaut 5968A-001 in stainless steel. And it's a chronograph, so the, um, the subdial you see is not uh, small seconds. It is uh, simply the, the minute counter for the chronograph, up to 60 minutes. This watch is worth about $170,000. As Larry June said, 200 for the watch without a diamond at all. Rolex Date 840, reference 228206 in platinum with the ice blue Roman dial. This is really a classic look. Uh, it looks like stainless steel to anybody who doesn't know uh, about this watch. They think it's just a regular Rolex date just in stainless steel that's worth 10 grand. But in reality, it's worth about $80,000. He even said 60 grand for the platinum Rolly, but I keep it cool. So he's made 20 grand profit on his Rolex date 840 in platinum. So good job, Larry. Next up is the Rolex date 840, reference 228235. An 18 karat rose gold with the olive green dial made for the 60th anniversary of the Rolex Day Date. Expensive time, this a Rolex watch. It don't mean much to me. I just wanted to watch. <laughs> it's worth about $60,000. Next up is the Rolex Daytona, reference 116508. It's another Daytona in this collection. Um, this one is an 18 karat yellow gold and it's nicknamed the John Mayer because it has that famous green dial. Uh, that was uh, not appreciated for many years, but when John Mayer was on Talking Watches 2, which is a podcast on Houdinki, people uh, he said that this watch was undervalued in the Rolex lineup, so people started buying it, and then the price spiked like crazy to over $100,000. So uh, it's been nicknamed uh, John Mayer ever since. And right now it's worth a little less since the market has gone down. It's worth about $90,000. As he said... Two chains with a platinum rolly, green face on the gold Daytona. We gain money up. Rolex GMT Master 2. Reference 126710 BLNR in stainless steel with a Jubilee bracelet. And it has that blue and black Batman bezel. Uh, people nickname it the Batman. It's not an official name from Rolex. But it's worth about $20,000. Five hours on it in a state. Gotta get this cheese. Stainless steel Batman Rolex with no deeds. <laughs> Another Batman Rolex in this collection is the exact same one but with the oyster bracelet. Uh, it's the refer reference 126710 BLNR. Um, maybe he has just one watch and he swaps out bracelets. 
or he just uh, kind of traded it in to get another one with um, the oyster bracelet. Uh, but still, I'm going to count it as another watch in this collection. It's worth about 20 grand. Rolex Dead 8 36, reference 128238 in 18 karat yellow gold with a champagne dial. This one is worth about 30 grand. Rolex Dead 8 40, 228238 in 18 karat yellow gold with a champagne dial, exactly the same watch but 4 millimeters bigger. It's worth about $45,000. The newest addition to this collection is the Cartier Santos WSSA0039 in stainless steel with a black ADLC coating from the Cartier factory. Uh, it was released in 2022, so he was able to get his hands on it uh, right at the release. This is a watch that I'm really happy to see Cartier do because people, before uh, Cartier released this model, were coating these watches with PVD aftermarket and then putting diamonds on them which would significantly reduce, reduce the value of the watch. But now that Cartier does it from the factory, all these aftermarket watches are going to essentially become worthless because all the people who want those watches are just going to buy the one from the factory because it's worth almost the same as the one in stainless steel. It's worth about 10 grand right now. Rolex Date 840, 228-348 RBR in 18 karat yellow gold. Has factory diamonds on it. Uh, it has a pave diamond bezel. Uh, and also baguette R markers. It's worth about 60 grand. So that's it for Larry June's watch collection. It's worth about $600,000 in total, and his net worth is about 3 million bucks. So Larry is definitely running up those numbers with his brand Midnight Organic and also his music. Think about it. If an album sell sells for $10 and you sell 17,000 copies in one week for one album, that's $170,000, which is quite a lot of money. But over, over time, uh, let's say it sells 50K, that's half a million bucks for one album. But that's just uh, grossly kind of estimating uh, the numbers. But if you're uh, assigned to a label and get 10% of that, now you only get 17,000 first week from your album, which is not a lot. I would have to rate Larry June's watch collection a 7 out of 10. I think it's a really good, kind of concise, to the point collection. Has nothing too exotic or... Um, Nothing too rare, it's just a good, well-rounded collection. The first watch I would recommend him is a Patek Philippe Nautilus 5980, because he has a, um, a Patek Aquanaut, but not a Nautilus, and uh, this one is quite a classic. And next, an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph 26320OR, um, especially with the blue dial, I think it looks great. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about Larry June's watch collection, and also what do you think about his music. Are you such a big fan of his, such like, uh, just like me? Because honestly, I think he has a great uh, positive effect on his listeners, whether that's eating healthy, uh, working and being productive and just overall enjoying life uh, a lot more and focusing on the positive aspects, unlike a lot of rappers that try to promote drugs or violence or stuff that's definitely not a positive influence for the youth. So let me know uh, in the comments what you think about Larry June and uh, make sure you run up your numbers. Suck it to me.